sickle cell disease. Five-year-old African-American male has extreme abdominal episodes as well as extreme bone pain. What is going to be the mechanism underlying this, uh, uh, this diagnosis? So extreme abdominal pain, extreme bone pain, we are going to be talking about sickle cell disease. So sickle cell disease is a glutamic acid to valine transition. It's a glutamic acid to valine transition, and that is going to be at the sixth position in the beta chain. So it's a glue to a valve, okay? So 90% of hemoglobin S needs to be present in order for you to have sickle cell disease. Patients with sickle cell disease are going to be treated with hydroxyurea to decrease frequency and severity of vaso-occlusive crises. So what is the direct effect of hydroxyurea on their hemoglobin physiology? Yeah, exactly. It increases hemoglobin F. And such that now if you increase hemoglobin F, you know what happens? You have hemoglobin that has reduced 2,3 BPG concentrations. And that hemoglobin that has reduced 2,3 BPG concentrations holds on to oxygen so well. What's the mechanism as to what's going on in sickle cell disease? Because they're in a low oxygen state, they're sickling. And so inducing that uh, hemoglobin F is really important. So what is the mechanism behind splenic insufficiency and sickle cell disease? Well, it, the splenic insufficiency and sickle cell disease causes sickling in the spleen. You're going to get consumption and decreased blood flow as well as splenic infarction. So the sickle cell patient post splenectomy may have which RBC inclusions on their peripheral blood smear? What RBC inclusions will sickle cell patients have? How will jolly bodies? And this represents splenic insufficiency and particularly the remnants in how jolly bodies represent nuclear chromatin. So what is sickle cell trait? Sickle cell trait on hemoglobin electrophoresis is going to be a patient who doesn't have too much amounts of hemoglobin S, and that's going to be sickle cell trait. So the genetic advantage of sickle cell trait, what is the genetic advantage of sickle cell trait? Yeah, exactly. It's going to have protection from plasmodium falciparum, which is malaria. So again, another think like the test maker, the things that affect or that, that occur in sickle cell anemia, you need to know this from head to toe, okay? So what about sickle cell plus hip pain? What did we talk about? Avascular necrosis. You guys are learning something. Oh my gosh, yes. A sickle cell patient with fever and shortness of breath, and now you have a new right lobe infiltrate. What are we thinking about? Sickle cell patient with fever and shortness of breath. It's kind of like a sickle cell patient with pneumonia. We're thinking about acute chest syndrome. What about this? Sickle cell anemia and right upper quadrant pain. What's in the right upper quadrant? Your gallbladder. Remember, you get pigment gallstones in sickle cell disease. Patients with sickle cell with fever and leg pain and cortical enhancement. Fever? Wait, fever and bone pain? Fever and bone pain? I'm thinking about osteomyelitis, but here's the kicker. They have sickle cell and thus it's going to be salmonella osteomyelitis. Sickle cell patient who has an acute drop in reticulocytes, we're going to be thinking about ache plastic crises. The microbiological tie-in is parvovirus B19. Hematuria and small clots in the urine. Wow, small clots in the urine? Hematuria? How does sickle cell disease affect the kidney? Well, it causes renal papillary necrosis. Renal papillary necrosis caused by sickle cell um, disease. Absolutely know it. So sepsis plus sickle cell. Remember, sickle cell patients, what are they? They are functionally going to be, or functionally or even structurally, the surgeon can take it out, asplenic. Tie in that Howell Jolly bodies that we were talking about, right? So sepsis in sickle cell patients is going to be related to encapsulated organisms. So what are your encapsulated organisms? Strep pneumo, Haemophilus, Neisseria. These are your big encapsulated um, organisms. And so that's why in Rainbow, when I have a sickle cell patient coming into uh, the hemonc service and they are, have this concern for sepsis, I cue in on the fact that they are going to be functionally asplenic. What about this one? Sickle cell disease plus a focal neurologic deficit. That's a sickle cell stroke in the brain. You need to do exchange transfusion. Hemoglobin C disease. Hemoglobin C disease. So what's the difference between hemoglobin S and hemoglobin C? It is going to be a glut uh, glutamine to lysine uh, tra transition. So a glue to a lysine tra uh, uh, transition. And so remember, uh, glue is going to be hydrophobic and val is going to be um, uh, at the same position. And so that's the difference between hemoglobin S as well as uh, um, hemoglobin C. All right.